chainsaws. Battery goes petrol. Let's do it. Okay, so this is the Makita DUC353Z. Let's have a little look at it. 36 volt, so two of your, if you're already running Makita battery tools, two of your batteries that you already have, so, which is good. Um, 36 volt, uh, toolless chain adjustment. Don't know how that works. We'll find that out in a minute. Um, good, it's got a bit of weight to it. Um, feels pretty well made. Um, on off, I guess, battery level indicator at the top. All right, let's go cut some timber. All right, here we are. We've got some sleepers lined up. So pretty well, Nick has been a long time believer in the old trustworthy petrol chainsaw. Doesn't sound right for the battery. But we'll soon find out which one is more more economical, I guess. Yeah, or more suited to traveling and camping, light use. So the idea behind it, we use the most uniform piece of timber. We've got red gum sleepers. Um, we've stacked them up. The idea is we're gonna run one saw at a time, straight down the lot of these sleepers. Um, you'll be able to see the time it takes to cut that whole length of sleepers. And then we'll put that saw down and use the next saw and we'll keep alternating that until one of them runs out of steam. Um, my money's on the on the petrol to, yeah, to sure. as far as uh, longevity goes. Yeah, definitely. Um, new chains all round. Brett full Fox. tank, brand spankers. Full batteries. Biggest, do they do a bigger battery? Makita do, these are six amp hours. Um, that's the biggest they do in this in that size in this in size, 18 volt. in 18 volt. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's the optimum you can get out of that. And well, that's petrol. So should we give this a go? Yep. Let's do it. no dramas. So the Makita uh, 36 volt 14 inch blade of bar. They're both both the same bar length so this is the very first time this has been used. So let's do it. Oh it's quiet. All good Marco? Yep. go. I definitely definitely uh, have to go a little bit easier as far as you can't put as much force on the battery but um, yeah it cut pretty well. All right let's go back to Petty. We'll time it again Marco. We're still reading full after that. We've still got both of our battery indicators saying they are full, so we might need more timber. with the petrol. Alright, so 
this was cut number three with the Makita 80, oh, 36 volter. The battery indicators are still telling me that they are full, so that's pretty impressive. Let's go. We are down to two out of three bars on both batteries there. We might need to readjust here, Marco. We've cut more than I thought we would with that battery saw, to be honest with you. This is cut number four with the Petty. Four with the 36 folder. What do we got? Battery indicators, one is down to one of three and one is down to two of three. So you'd probably say that's about halfway. We might get close with this next cut which is good because we've run out of timber. Oh, I've lost count, is that? This, this is number five. Saw cut number five, petrol again. The petrol continues to run as we sort of expected. Number five, back to the 36 folder. One of three bars on both batteries. Still going. That's impressive. All right, so we're running out of uh, we're running out of sleepers here. So this will be cut six. We're going to go straight with the Makita. We want to sort of see when this thing's going to die. Let's Just do it. Number six. Wait. Still got one bar on both batteries. Again with the Makita. Pretty well it. That is pretty impressive. I may be a sold man. I'm lucky because we didn't have much more timber. <laughs> well, what do you think, mate? I think I'll be. Uh, well, I don't know. There's still some. There's still some things to to think about. Yeah. It's not like you can just chuck this into your vehicle and be done with it. Yep. There are other things. Um, what do you reckon we head back to the, leave this mess for yep. someone else to clean up? Yep. Head back to the shed. Yep. Have a look at how much fuel's left. How much fuel. That, this did a couple more cuts. Yep. But we thought, sort of thought to start with that that would have done more cuts regardless. Yep. Um, we were more so testing. That, I was, I was impressed. Oh, it took me by surprise. I mean, speed wasn't an issue. It's Realistically, like, if you're camping, who cares about six seconds longer, yeah. six or ten seconds longer? Like, if yeah. you're camping with that tighter tolerances with time frames, <laughs> probably don't go camping. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's head back inside. Let's do it. Compare. Well, Marco. <laughs> Petrol first battery. Mm -hmm. Before I was petrol. We've, we've used this on trips 
for years. Yep. Um, it sat on top of the roof in hail, rain, sun. Um, Has it ever failed us? Uh, only due to error, user error, and that was myself yep. in Tassie. Yep. Um, that was purely uh, user error. As far as has it never started? No, it's always started. It's yep. always been good. Um, You've never run out of fuel. Like no, it's never been an issue. We always use five five liter jerry can. Yeah, um, has to be obviously it's a two stroke, so you need oil. So if you're on a month long trip, like we have been multiple times, you're going to go through more than especially Tassie. Um, you're probably going to use more than five liters of fuel, so you've got to carry oil too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what have we got? Fuel. Yep. So you need a jerry can. Small one's good enough, but obviously you're also going to need oil. Yep. Um, oh, actually, also bar oil. Yep. So you got two oils. That's for both. Yep. Regardless of your saw, your battery still has. Yep. Has you wouldn't take one of these out without that. No. Um, so yeah, I mean. It's a little bit more uh, and then a tool, I guess, for a for tool. adjustment. Like you, you don't you don't really need it for the, the modern day ones. Um, I'm pretty, this is we pretty much bought this because it was the smallest saw we could buy. We didn't want to take room. It cuts enough wood for a uh, you know well you just saw it then. What it can cut enough for a campfire. Yeah. Um, and if you had to, you could try and cut something. Bigger, if you know, if yeah. that was your only option, sure, you'd give it a shot. And it's in the over the road sort yeah. of circumstance. Uh, we have on the way to Taddy, funny that we had to tip this out because they didn't want fuel um, taken on the on the ferry over there. So, as soon as we got over there, we had to fill up and use our oil and to make, mix some more fuel up for it. So, straight away, we had no fuel. Yeah, so either do your research before <laughs> you go on a boat, um, or yeah, that's just another thing. We didn't, you wouldn't have to worry about that, obviously, with this right. I mean, that's a... So, after saying that, you would think, no brainer, you'd go electric, or yeah. a battery. But, with this, obviously you need batteries, so, a couple of batteries. Minimum two batteries. Minimum, absolute minimum. I think, I would personally probably take four. Yep. We take, uh, like a, a minimum of a drill and a grinder also on our big trips. Yep. Um, if we're going, you know, for a small trip, three hours away or whatever for a weekend. Yeah. Not so much. So we're already carting these anyway. We are. So, um, but that's all very well and good. But yep. after you cut that much timber, obviously you need to charge the batteries. And so you need to charge it. Yep. Without an inverter in your car. And that's where this setup gets a little bit more expensive. If you aren't set up for it with an inverter, um, well, you can't charge batteries. So you're not going to take four weeks worth of batteries. Um, or if you're caravanning and stuff where. Yeah. Terminals for your caravan, you probably got 240 power. Yeah. Um, or, yeah. Or you only stay in exactly. campsites that have power, then you don't need the inverter. Yeah. Whatever. And then if you, yeah. It's, yeah. If you're doing out what we like to do, you're going to need an inverter. Yep. Yeah. Um, with that set up, you know, what would it, you don't need a huge inverter. I'm not sure what you need to run to charge them. It's not massive. Oh, it would be so. Um, but if you're not savvy with auto electrical, you've got to pay for someone to set you to, Install your inverter. Yep. That's another cost. Yep. Um, literally, with this setup here, what's the average cost there? I think this was like two hundred and wow, two maybe two fifty. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like so, sub three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks, you can go, and yep. and that's what we did. Yeah. Well, these weren't on the market either when we bought this. So yeah. Um, we already had an inverter in both of it, or in both our vehicles now. So yeah. With equipped to do it and that was more so for camera gear than a chainsaw yeah this is starting to make a lot more sense now after seeing what it just went through yeah um and the fact that all the other costs we have those things inverted exactly. we have the other reasons exactly now this is just starting to help out yeah like i said before we take the, the other power tools we i'm a tradesman by trade um i've been using makita stuff for years and years so it only made sense to keep buying the keys exactly. because they've yeah. got you. Yeah. As soon as you buy one tool, generally they've got you for life because it's a big outlay to change the tools. Yeah. Um, I'm not upset because that saw is incredibly impressive. Oh yeah, the Makita one, everyone knows, they're top of the range. Yeah. Because if you're talking um, power tools in general, yeah. Makita in the argument, it's that it's personal preference really, yeah. whether you're going Milwaukee or yeah. Dewalt or whatever. 
Um, but they're up there. So what else we got? Noise while at camp. Yep. This you said it was written on here too somewhere. Oh. 99 decibels and 94. I'm not sure that's an exact representation of how it sounds in real life. Like as soon as you stop pulling the trigger on that, nothing. Yep. This is running. This is a motor, like yep. a like a petrol powered motor. Everyone knows that you know. Does it say on there non-run like idling and idling is 78. So that's so there's the idle one. This is zero. Yeah. <laughs> um, but even still, when it when that's cutting and that's cutting, yeah. This has got a throatier yeah noise than that. I mean, um, it's less intrusive if you like if you've got your firewood at camp, but you want to dock it down size. Mm. That's way less intrusive than stoking definitely. this thing. Oh, definitely. Um, and you don't want to annoy other campers. Um, it's it's just rude. Um, so noise wise, that's got you as well. Oh, noise wise, it's all over. The other thing, you pull the trigger, that's started. You've got to start this. Yep. And everyone knows things, uh, petrol motors can be a little temperamental. You could be pulling and pulling and pulling, you clean your air filter. Um, yeah, this I mean, what good, we didn't show at the start of this was this saw hasn't been used for probably six months. Yeah, and quite often you may not use your saw for a, a long time when you're on a trip. You may not need it the whole trip. That's the point of it. It's there for just in case. But we didn't show you spent five, four or five minutes. Yeah. I pulled, the, pulled the, the cover off, pulled the air filter out and got it started without the air filter on there. So how the, like the, the air cleaner. Yeah, well, you literally um, click a battery in and you pull the trigger. Yeah. That's a massive advantage. As for weight, what do we got? Geez, oh, there's no batteries in this one, but as is, they're very similar. Yep. Very similar. So you'd, you'd expect the Makita to be... Touch heavier? Touch heavier. Two batteries. It's not, it's not a deal breaker either. No, nah, shit, no. Not, not even in the slightest. Nope. Um, well, actually, if you had a full, care, full count of fuel. Yeah, true. You know, that's the power for that one. This is the power for this one. Yeah, so. true. There's extra five kilos. Um, but either way, not a deal breaker. What would your choice be? Well, I'd, I'd go the electric simply because I wouldn't expect to use it much. And I would make sure I'd, you know, have it, I'd put it in a box or put it in the vehicle somewhere. And Would you go the smaller one or would you go the 14? I'd inch? probably go this because then it's still capable. Mm -hmm. Like we've had trees across the road yeah. where anything smaller would, would do it but it, it, this would just get you out of a bit more of a jam if required yeah but if i was looking to if i was cutting a lot i would probably go, petty. go for a petty but that then i'd be looking at a longer bar as well yeah. and so you're looking at full size saw then yeah As far as touring goes and camping, I'd be going for uh, the, the battery. Yeah, battery saw. Mm -hmm. We're set up for it already. In both vehicles. We both run Makita power tools. Um, That's the biggest thing. Is already taking a grinder and a drill. Exactly. We've already got two batteries. batteries yeah. So it's, it's literally that is all we take now. Yep. Extra. Yep. And then we leave all this at home. Yep. For us, it's a no-brainer. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Because we take that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Simple, we'll take them a few trips, see how it goes. Yeah. So hopefully that helps you guys in deciding whether it's, you know, if you guys have an inverter already, if you already take power tools, I'm not sure if other companies like DeWalt or Mill, well, I'm sure they would, because um, not everyone is running Makita, but yeah. You can make the decision for yourself, but there's the facts and figures. Um, but yeah, let us know below if there's something we've missed onto why we shouldn't swap to one of these on the road. Um, let us know. But yeah, hit subscribe. Thanks for the follow.